I'm starting this project with a modified version of the normal template. This template has a single audio track and a preview bus pre-inserted, as well as a number of custom screen sets. Sonar X1's browser is the hub for finding and adding content to a project. The browser can auto-preview files, preview files at host tempo so they play back in sync and in context with the project, and the browser can be routed to any bus in the project, so I'll route mine to the preview bus. The browser also has default content locations, which are essentially shortcuts to the content in your system. All three versions of Sonar X1 come with 500 megs of loops from Sample Magic and 500 megs of loops from Loop Masters. Preset content locations make finding these loops a breeze. I want to browse drum loops, so I'll use the context filter to find loops that only have the word drum in them. Clicking on a loop auto preview it. and dragging it into the track view adds it to the project. Because this is a Rex file, I'll right click on the clip and bounce it to a WAV file so I can use it with Audio Snap. Next, I'll change the edit filter's data type to Audio Transients. And I'll double click in the track's empty space to make it fill out the track view. Clicking within the clip brings up the Audio Snap palette, and I'll adjust the threshold so that all transients have Audio Snap markers. And finally, clicking the Split Beats into Clips button in the Audio Snap palette will slice up the audio file at the markers, creating individual clips. And now that I'm done with Audio Snap, I'll change my edit filter back to Clips. Selecting a clip and holding Shift while pressing Spacebar will preview that individual clip. I'll use this clip for my kick drum and I'll put a fade on it by grabbing the top right corner and pulling to the left. Notice the fade snaps to grid, which in this case is set to measure. Next, I'll bounce both of these to clips to apply the fades and apply trimming at the same time. Now these samples are ready to be part of a drum kit. One of the browser's default content locations is for track templates, which I'll use to add Session Drummer 3 into the project. They're organized by type, and Sonar X1 includes many different templates for Session Drummer 3. And I'll clear my search filter to see all of my Session Drummer templates. And just drag and drop it right into the project. And as you can see, all of Session Drummer's audio tracks are preloaded, configured, and ready to go. Double clicking on any of Session Drummer's track header icons will open up the synth. And I'll switch over to the mixer page, then drag my kick sample onto the kick drum icon, and do the same with the snare. For the hi hat, I'll right click on the hi hat icon, choose Load Instrument, browse to my hi hat folder, and load one of the hi hat SFZ modules. These modules are much more than just an individual sample. They include velocity layers, mappings, etc. I'll do the same thing for my crash and load up a crash module. And round out the kit with the ride module. This lets you use elements from different kits, including your own samples, to build a custom drum kit. And here's what the drum kit sounds like so far. So I'm going to mute my first audio track since I don't need that anymore and switch over to screen set 2 which I have set up for pattern creation. Clicking on the step sequencer icon at the top of Session Drummer's interface opens the step sequencer in the multi-dock. Step sequencer is basically a grid of rows and steps that automatically maps out to Session Drummer or any other soft synth. I'm going to change this pattern to be 8 beats long. And the step sequencer pattern can also adapt to any time signature to have any number of steps per beat. I'll leave mine at four. To get the pattern started, I'll right click on my hi-hat row and choose to auto fill every two steps and then preview the pattern. Lay down a basic snare pattern and add some kick drums. As it is now, everything is locked on timing and at the same velocity. So I'll open up my hi-hat row, 
and edit the MIDI velocity of every other hi-hat, giving it a more human feel. I'll open up my kick drum row and add some swing to the entire row, say about 62. And I think I'll add some grace notes to my snare. Open up the snare row and edit the velocity of those ghost notes. And at the end of my snare pattern, I'm gonna create a snare roll. So I'll add a couple of hits, double click those hits to flam them, and adjust my flam amount to pull those flams apart a bit. And finally edit some velocity on those hits. So my kick drums have some swing to them and I wanna make my snare ghost notes match that. But I don't wanna add swing to the entire row because that's gonna screw up the snare rolls. So I'll switch the data type over to time offset, which lets me push and pull the timing of individual steps. Now the snare's ghost notes match the swing of the kick drum. Step sequencer patterns live in the track view as clips, just like any other audio or MIDI clip. To build a larger arrangement based off this individual pattern, I'll switch over to screen set number three. And then I'll control drag this pattern over to copy and paste it. Step sequencer patterns are linked by default, so I'll right click on the new pattern and choose unlink step sequencer clips. I'm going to double click this unlinked new pattern so it opens up in the step sequencer in my multi dock because I want to create a variation on the snare hits at the end of the pattern. Double clicking those last two hits will unflam them. I'll add a new hit in, adjust the velocity. Maybe tweak the velocity just a bit more. Now I've got two similar patterns with different endings, so I'll lasso these two patterns, control drag to copy them over, turn my snap to grid back on, and align that to the measure. And then select all four patterns, copy those over one more time, and create loop points out of the entire section, which I can do by hitting Shift L or by using the button in the control bar. Next I'm going to add more parts to this arrangement using track layers, so I'll double click again on my MIDI track. Right click in the track divider to choose show layers and right click again to insert a new layer. I'll go up to my menu and choose step sequencer to insert a new step sequencer pattern. I'll click the plus button to insert new rows until my crash row appears and just put a hit right on the one and drag the new crash clip down to the new lane. I'm gonna rename this clip by opening clip properties in my inspector. And now I'll control copy this out every other repetition of the original bass step sequencer pattern. I want to add a second crash symbol, so I'm going to insert a third row. Go back to my menu and choose step sequencer. For this crash, I want to use the sample on note 57, so I'll use the up arrow until I reach that note. Throw this crash over the ending snare and repeat this every fourth repetition. And since I've got clip properties open in my inspector, I'll go ahead and name these clips as well. So I've got a basic kick snare hi-hat pattern in the first layer and two different crash patterns in the second and third layers. There's no limit on the number of layers you can have in a MIDI or instrument track, so you can add layers to do drum fills, tom breaks, or whatever you want. So to create a larger arrangement of this 16 bar sequence, I'm going to go up to my timeline and use timeline zoom. You can pull up and down to zoom in and out in the timeline. And use my smart tool to lasso all of the clips, and again just control drag to copy and paste these and they'll snap to the measure because my snap to grid is set at measure. And then I'll lasso the whole thing and create a new loop point based on this selection.